Hello everybody and welcome back to the live stream here on Tabletop for UK Games Expo 2018. I am joined by Roger from Cold Spring yes, Games. Yep. Okay, a lot of names today, so I'm trying to get them right. If I get them wrong, I do apologize. Roger, what have you brought along to look at today? Okay, well the first game we're going to look at today is a game called Raids. It's by uh, uh, Matt uh, Gilbert and uh, Matthew Dunstan, uh, two British uh, games inventors, and it's published by Yellow, who are very famous for not only the uh, quality of the games themselves, but the beauty and style of the artwork for the games uh, the games they produce. Yeah, I will say, I, I as soon as this came into the studio, I looked at it and went, oh my god, it's pretty, because if you just look at the artwork that's on this board, this is absolutely gorgeous. It's bright and cartoony enough to bring kids in, without being too kiddy to actually put away adults. Mm -hmm. So it's really nicely done that way. So what is the objective of our game? Well, the objective of the game is uh, it's up to four players. Mm -hmm. um, and the objective of the game, you, travel, you voyage around the uh, area here, mm -hmm. navigating these foreign lands. And you are uh, collecting goods for trade. Mm -hmm. You're improving the, um, uh, the quality of your longship by uh, adding uh, weapons. Uh, you are getting runes and you're getting Vikings to join your, your ship as well. I see, I see. So it is a, very much you are playing the Vikings going out for your summer raids, yes? Absolutely, yes. So you navigate around the, around, uh, around the churches here. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, I'm seeing some of the components here. We actually have your lovely Viking longships. And to begin with, they're all blank, but it has these segmented areas. So I'm assuming this is where all your upgrades are going to go, yes? OK, yes. Well, the, um, uh, there's 10 uh, shields along the, um, uh, the front of the longship. Yes. And if you look, these are the, uh, these are the uh, Vikings themselves, so beautiful little wooden, wooden Vikings. Uh -huh. And you can never have more Vikings than you get in your, um, your longship. I so, see. So you um, and so if you've got ten shields, you yep. can have a maximum of ten Vikings. I see. As you go round and you collect different resources, for example, if you raid and get some sheep, yes. that takes out two of your shields. Ah. So you've got to balance what resources you get onto your boat, yes. or whether you add, for example, a um, an axe, which enables you to defeat some of the uh, monsters more quickly. Yes. But it reduces the number of Vikings you get. I see. I see. So it's, it's very, very much, a, you're building your ship, you're customizing your ship as you're sailing around. I quite like this idea. I love mm -hmm. games that let me do that and tell my, my story by the, the upgrades and the way my, my crew and my adventure changes. Yeah. Very, very cool. One of the really cool things about the game itself is a, you go in reverse order. Okay. So for example, if we were to start a game now, yes. you would, um, the person who is in last place yes. would start off and they can sail as far as they like. Yes. Um, in any, uh, following the order around the board. So, for uh -huh. example, this guy might um, sail off to here and stay there. Yes. The second guy would head off because so, who's in, um, uh, and they would stay here. Now, the third one, mm -hmm. because there is two, uh, could go all the way past or could could stop here. And but because if they sailed here, yes, they've uh, they've missed these. Uh, they, sorry. Because they've come through, they actually miss these two. These come off, and they have to sail beyond the other ones, and that helps drive it forward. Uh, now, in so terms of turn order, mm -hmm. it's not your turn next; it's yeah. whoever's at the back who's next. Yeah. So if they went right round to there, mm -hmm. and then this guy went to here, yeah. it, this guy's turn next, not that guy. Yeah. So you've got to sort of think: right, do I want to get ahead? How far do I want to keep behind them? And as you go past certain places. You can stop, uh, you're not going to stop, so going past here, you collect one Viking onto your boat. Going around here, you get two extra Vikings. Here, you, you're not allowed to stop here, but you've got to either battle the monster mm -hmm. or sacrifice one of your Vikings overboard. Ah, so feed it to the monster to get away. Exactly. I see. Now, uh, just for, for my own clarity, so we lost two tiles here. Mm -hmm. With the way the board's laid out now, would we lose these two tiles because the guy at the very back is no longer there? Yeah, well, they've gone past them. So, say for example, it was this guy's go next, yeah? Yes. And he wanted to come past here, he battles the monster, ends up there. Yeah. This guy, these tiles are no longer available to them, uh -huh. so they're removed. So he has to catch up by going... I see, so you can't just putter about at the back gathering over. No, no, you can't. You've, you've got to be competing at the front with the people yeah. as you go through. Yeah, so these four tiles here would already yeah. be gone as they well? Yeah, they will be gone as well, yeah. Ah, I understand, I understand that. And then is it as you stop at a location you get to take that tile? When you leave the location after you stop there. Ah. Because if you want to, if for example later on in the game, this, this, this particular tile here, yeah. that has, um, that's collecting runes. 
And if you have one, you get one point. If you have two, you get three points. Three, you get six points. Four, you get ten points. Yeah. So obviously, the more than you get, yeah. the, it's significantly better. Mm -hmm. So it may be, let's just set something up, that uh, it's the last round. Yes. And I sell on here, and you're at the back here. Yes. And you go, actually, you know what? I want that as well, because I've got four. I'm yeah. at five. You could sell alongside me. Yes. And then we have to battle it out with our Vikings. Ah. And the way the, the battling works yes. is you basically increase your... So, I, so you'd say, right, I'm put my one man up against you. Mm -hmm. And I go, well, I'm going to put my two up against you. Yeah. You put your three up against me. Ah, I now, I don't have four to battle you. Yes. So I lose, but all these Vikings are, dead. are now dead. Ah. So it's a very costly thing to do. Yeah. So it's one of those, is it worth for the extra points? Well, killing most yeah. of my Vikings. So uh, there, is a, there is a battling element to it as well, mm -hmm. but generally we've found when we've been playing it, mm -hmm. players are reluctant because they don't want to sacrifice all their Vikings. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I have, I have one or two gung-ho friends in the office who would probably start battling <laughs> away just because it messes with the opponent and yeah. messes with the, the ships and the actual, the actual number of crews that they have because they may actually plan, I may get rid of a lot of mine, mm -hmm. but I'm getting what I want from it. What? Mm -hmm. Yes, hi Lance, hi Lance. Uh, yes, Lance is he's that kind of gamer. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you do? So this so you turn all the way around yes. and you end with the with your ship with the, so you, you might yes. end up with your ship with the a sail on it, yep. uh, an extra axe, yep. and uh, and some resources. Yes. And then uh, you you get money for various different bits. Yes. Done. And then you lay out the second voyage tiles. Mm -hmm. And you serve and again, oh, and third and fourth. And obviously, as you go through the different voyages, yes. you get hard, for example, harder and harder monsters yes, to compete with. I see, I see. Um, so that's only three, but the ones in the last round are six. Yeah. You get uh, different resources where you can actually sell some of your logs, which gets you guaranteed points. Mm -hmm. If, for example, you're on the long ship here and you can't get rid of any of your pieces, yes. you actually just have to throw your logs overboard really so you've got to make the you've got to plan as well thing it's it works on and uh, you know it's a very straightforward game to get accessible and start playing yes but on uh, but as you play it you realize oh actually there's quite a lot of decision making i need to doing yeah and do i want to be slightly nasty do i want to play yeah now i am wondering so let's say we had just finished the the first voyage so the mm -hmm. board is clear yeah we have all just made it back to here the last man has arrived yeah is this the point where we would sell things like our logs for money? No, nope, no. You uh, you keep your you keep you keep your logs because in one in the further rounds in rounds two, three, and four, uh -huh. you get ports, and so only if you stop at a port can you, can you then sell your goods. Got it. So up until that point, they are taking up space, vital vi Viking space. Yes, I understand. Later rounds. I understand. And then we get these, which I think are a beautiful component to any game. But it's something that makes me happy when I see it in games. It's metal coins. I just love the sound they make. I love the tactile feel of them whenever you're playing with them on the tabletop. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming whenever you're selling your logs and any other cargo you've gathered up, these are what you're getting. And do they count as victory points? They count as victory points. Um, uh, actually, when you sell your logs, you've got the victory points on them already because you've got the three victory points here. Yeah. But um, they count as victory points because you can earn them in, in a number of different ways. I see. So I they, see. They, they, they come into play at different points. But there's, it's not a massive part of it. But what I really like about them is not just the fact that they're metal, but they're beautifully engraved and the yes. artwork on them is beautiful yes but it's, it's one of those things i always think something like this adds just that touch of class to a game mm -hmm. you know there's just something a little more classy with that than a game that has your usual cardboard ones now there's nothing yeah. wrong with those at all but these just make a game feel just that little bit nicer to me yeah you know? and i think that's that's indicative of, of the kind of games that yellow produce in that yes. the fact they are they've got beautiful components they're really well thought out the artwork is is stunning and the gameplay is stunning too and i think you know it's 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 that package that makes you what makes you want to sit down mm -hmm. it's having an enjoyable game but also it's having the beautiful environment to play within mm -hmm. now how long would a usual game of this take to play out um once you've once you sort of master the basics i say probably no more than um uh, 40 to 45 minutes oh so uh, at a usual trip down to your club you could maybe get two three games of this in Absolutely. Night, depending on how far you want to go with it yeah very nice i like games that are like that that actually have enough of a playtime to feel like you've got a bit of meat on the bones, mm. but not so heavy that you're just feeling, oh, oh, it's so much work <laughs> to play this game. Yeah. This feels just in that nice butter zone, so I'm yeah. very impressed with that. Yeah. Okay, and just one final thing. What, the other thing I absolutely love about it is if you look inside the box itself, yeah. 
the different sections, you, when you pack it away, you pack it away beautifully. Uh -huh. That means that when you start to get out the next time, yeah. it's all there ready just to play. Okay, that's going to make our guy Ben super happy. You know the way you always have that one person in your gaming group mm -hmm. who is sort of the board game janitor who always yeah. makes sure everything's packed away just yeah. so? Yeah. That's Ben for us. So whenever a game comes along like that where it does pack away just so, makes him so happy. But there's also there's nothing more frustrating when you, you get a game out ready to play and you open up the box and you're going, oh, let's find those. Yeah. Yeah, where's it? Where, and you know, to be able to kind of get a, open it up and know mm. There's none of that, you just get playing straight away. Yeah. It's a delight. It's, it's one of my biggest gaming gripes, is whenever you have games that have speed bumps. Now that doesn't mm -hmm. just mean mechanics, but even something like that, that becomes a gaming speed bump that mm -hmm. prevents you getting in and getting playing. Yeah. Or a speed bump can be something that drops you back and out of the game. This feels like a fast, fun, furious game where you mm -hmm. and your mates are going to be moving, trying to gather everything up, and really trying to outsmart each other while you yeah. go out raiding the shores. <laughs> yeah. Very impressive. Excellent, okay. So that's the uh, that's the first of the, uh, the game today. Yep. The next one, it's a slightly different theme and style. Okay. This is called Okia. Okay. What have it's, we got here? It's by it's by Bruno uh, Cathala, who yep. did uh, King Domino. Uh huh. Now, King Domino is one of those board games that is very very well known. And what exactly is the idea of Okia? Okia, right? So Okia is you're trying to get four of your color, four of your geishas in a row, uh -huh. either or in a row or in a square, I or see. prevent your opponent from being able to lay a piece. I see. It's a very straightforward abstract game. It is also nominated for the uh, Abstract Game Award in this year's UK Games Ox Expo. So if you like the look of it, then please do vote for it. Cool. Um, okay, so red. Or no, let's actually play a game. Okay. I'll take red. Okay, red. Okay. Red Sorry. suits me. <laughs> so if you look at the look at the playing board here, yes, you'll see that you've on every tile you've got two aspects. For example, here you've got the sun and the leaves. Uh -huh. um, on here you've got the sun and the tree. Yep. You've got leaves and a uh, flag. Yep. You've got a bird and the tree. Yep. So you've got two aspects to every tile. Yes. And the game is as simple as this. So you're trying to get four reds in a row, uh -huh. or four in a square, or yes. diagonally, or prevent me to be able to choose a tile. Okay. And where we start is I start, so I'm going to choose that tile there, and I put that one there. Now, uh -huh. on your turn, uh -huh. you can put, a, put one of your pieces yes. either in a space that has a bird yes. or a space that has a tree. I see. So you go, can they go there, or there, or there, or there? I see. So I would pick, there's a tree here, mm -hmm. so I would remove this tile and put it in here, and that would leave you with the choice of either a flag or a tree. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to try dominate this middle bit. So I'm going for flag, flower, flowers. I'm going there. Okay. Hmm. Uh, I would go for this, which is flag and leaves. Here to try okay. and block you. And I'm the leaves. I'm going to go here. So it's leaves or what on this particular? Leaves one? or rain. So leaves you see the rain, rain clouds there. I see. Uh, in that case, I would choose leaves and a tree. To go okay. here. Okay. So, as with all laptop games, you get to that moment where you pause because mm -hmm. you need to think. Yes, um, yes. So... Well, th this, is, this is one horrible thing about me. Because of my job, I learn games very quickly. Mm -hmm. So, I, I am playing to win here. So, don't hold back. Okay, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, if anyone knows me, they know that's not the, uh, the way that we play. So, <laughs> let me go there. Okay. Uh, so, that was Flower or Rian. So in here, the flower here. Yeah, so I think I'll go here with the flowers and mm -hmm. the sun. Okay. And that'll give you sun or flowers again. Which is, wasn't a really good move. Really? Why not? Because I can now choose sun uh -huh. or flowers. Yes. And I can choose sun. Yes. And I get my four. Ah, but I thought you said four in a row, not four, four in a row. No, 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 it's there. No, no, I said four in a square. Okay. I said four in a square or I four see. in a row. Oh, thing. I see. Okay, let's okay. reset. I want to go okay. again. Yep. I will not be defeated at this game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then you just you randomly put these out, so yes. it doesn't matter where they go. Uh, okay. And you can start. Okay, uh, I will go for bird and tree to start. Okay, I'm going for tree and flag. And flower. Okay, I will go for bird and flower. Bird and flower. Uh, I'm going uh, as, oh no, no, not doing that one. Um, <laughs> I'm going bird and leaves. Bird and leaves. I will go leaves and sun. Okay, I'm going sun and palms, I think we'll call them. I can't remember the Okay. 
uh, sun and palms. Uh, I will go palms and bird. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go palm here. Palm and range. then I go. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I forced the move on you that time. Yeah. I, I told you I learned quick. <laughs> so, that yeah. is fast, furious, and fun. That is a perfect travel game to me. Okay. That is something that I can sit down on a train, mm -hmm. lay out on the you know the little tiny tables you get, lay mm -hmm. out on that. Not a problem. If yeah. I'm on like a boat or something. Hell, even in the, the back seat of the car between the seats, you know the way you get the fold down thing? Yeah, yeah, Lay yeah. out in that and off you go. That I like yeah. a lot. Uh, are both of these games available here at UK Games Expo this yes. weekend? Yes, so Rage is having its world premiere. It uh, wasn't due to launch until Gen Con, uh -huh. but we convinced Yellow because Matt and uh, Brett are here, mm -hmm. and they're both, uh, both UK-based authors. Yes. We thought it's important to get a game that is unique and launching at UK Games Expo. Yes. So this is the world premiere of Raids and that here, and it's available at the Quad Spree and Game Stand in Hall B16. B16. Um, okay. Okia is uh, available there as well, and other of the gamer retail retailing gamers, mm -hmm. uh, retailer shops around the uh, around the hall. So yep. all of them should have it. Uh, but I say the most important thing for Okia for us is if you uh, are entering into the awards, vote for it in the best abstract games category. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, uh, I tell you what, we'll take a very quick swipe because you guys have a lot more games to show off. So we will be back very soon. Okay, guys, we are back to very quickly talk about Queen Domino and Go Nuts for Donuts. Yep, and some Happy Salmon. Ooh, oh, no, Happy <laughs> Salmon. I remember this game from Essen last year. I think we got a game with like 20 people at one point. Yeah? Yeah, well, that was nuts. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, so at 4 o'clock today, there's a Happy Salmon uh, all-play game together. Yeah. So, um, Queen, shall I start on Queen Domino? L let's start with Queen Domino, because this is one I've heard quite a bit about, but I I've never actually had the chance to play. So what is the main concept of this game? So. That's down at this end of the table, guys, because there's a lot on here. <laughs> okay, so Queen Domino is a expansion of um, King Domino, but also a single stand uh, uh, a standalone playable game as well. Yes. The idea is you have your castle and you choose tiles to build around your castle. Yes. And you score points for the territories that you create. And I assume we each have our own castle that we're building around. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you have the different uh, pieces. Yes. And the way that the uh, the game works is that, for example, you notice that you'll randomly you'll choose these initially uh -huh. and then um, you then turn these runs over and you notice they're in ascending order yes. so 8, 12, 24, 24. Yes. So I go first here mm -hmm. and I can put my forest area yes. connecting to any other forest area I see. and then I get to choose which one of these I want to take. Yes. So I might choose that one mm -hmm. and then uh, it's purples go and yes. purple could choose and put one there, and then they choose whichever one they want next. Yes. And then, for example, if that then works out there. What then happens is four new tiles come out. I see. And they're placed in ascending order. So the better the, the, better the number, yeah. the, uh, the better the tile. The yes. harder the number, the better the tile. So these get then turned over. And this time, it's purple's turn to go. Yes. So purple goes first, and they get the choose of all of them. So as you saw, I was red before, yeah. and I wasn't able to, uh, and so I go last next time, yeah, but, but I got a better, pick, co better tile. The best tile so you go, yeah. Round, yeah. yeah. And that's the main concept of uh, King Domino and Queen Domino. Mm -hmm. Where Queen Domino adds more is the fact you've got these red areas, which are buildings. Yes. And you've got a track here where you can spend money and choose buildings to enhance ah, your area. So that's, sorry, that's, that's a track there. Yes, everybody. Yeah, it's that track. So, for example, if I wanted to add uh, this tile, yes, which has two ti two towers on it, uh -huh. and is worth three victory points. Yes, I put it into my around my castle. Yes, uh, but also I get the two towers to add. As I've got the two towers yep. to add to my uh, uh, my uh, territory, I also get the queen. Okay, and the queen allows me to buy these more cheaply, and also I can uh, act as a, as a crown mm -hmm. in the territory. Because at the end of the game, yes. you score according to the number of crowns in any particular territory. So yes. up here, this would be one, two, three, four, five times one. That would be five points. Yep. Here, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, ti uh, times, seven times, times, 
times two. Th oh, time, t times two normally, but with yep. the queen times, times three. three. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be twenty-one points. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so you're battling it out to see who keeps the queen each round as well. You can, your building. You so. can do that as well. Yeah. You can also um, also if you want to annoy your. Um, Opponents of all, you have a dragon, yeah. <laughs> and the dragon can fly down and burn one of the houses out of the way that you think your opponent might want. And there's various other sort of scoring elements as well. Okay. Really, the essence of Queen Domino is that it, a, it brings, takes a King Domino mechanic mm -hmm. and takes it to a much more complex strategic level. I see. Okay. Now, uh, that's Queen Domino. We're running along. Yep, yeah, that's okay. Yep. So now we'll go for Gonuts for Donuts. What is this? So, Gonuts for Donuts, you always start with one more. Um, of these than the amount of players there are. So yes. for example, if there were three players, you wouldn't play with these, you'd just play with the four. Yep. Everyone would get however many are here, yes. one of each of these, yes. and you keep it in your hand. And for example, you'll see that the that the uh, donuts are different, like French cruller. Yep. Um, this gets you two points, and you can discard any number of cards not selected this round. Yes. So if you were to choose, uh, everyone chooses them by themselves, so yep. you're looking through your cards and you put it down on the table and everyone yep. turns it over at the exact same ah, time. Ah, and then that activates the ability on each card? Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and, but if, for example, you're playing against your opponent and you both go for mm -hmm. this card and both go for number two, yeah. uh, then it would be completely discarded and nobody gets the card. Oh, So you've I also see. got to kind of look around for what they might be going for. Yeah. And yeah, that gives you interesting choices. You could actually block an opponent if you really yeah, know they're exactly. just going for those final two points or something. Yeah, exactly. Very, very cool. Because you can kind of see who, for example, this one can end up with zero quite easily on the ah. card. Uh, it goes zero, and then if you have two of the same card, then you get six, and then yeah. zero if you have three. Ah, so they yeah. might be trying to collect it, but then be discarded because you've just blocked them. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's a very, like, Push, push your luck kind of yeah, game. Push your luck is tactical and yeah. again it sounds like one of those games that you can sit down and just get a few rounds in of an evening which is what I really like yeah. in games. Yeah mm. it is and it only takes 20 to half an hour probably. Really? It's wow. kind of along the same lines as Sushi Go with the scoring. Yeah yeah. It obviously doesn't have the pick and pass element of Sushi Go. Yes. Came in. Right. Yes. Okay the last one is Happy Salmon. Happy now, you've talked about this very quickly. Uh, I'm not sure full of time to okay. play. <laughs> so, well, here Alfie could be my glamour assistant, yeah? Okay. So there are there are four different activities within the Happy Salmon. Yes. There is the high five. Uh, yes, so we have high five. So high five. Give me a high five. Okay. Uh, then we have the pound it. Pound it, yeah. Which is then your fist bump. Yep. And uh, then we have switch route where we would switch places. We're not doing that. <laughs> and then we have the best bit, which is the happy salmon, where yes. you put it on like that and you happy salmon like that. <laughs> and the whole nature of the game is the fact that you've all got decks of cards, yep. you start it off together, and you try and get rid of your cards as quickly as possible by throwing them on the ground. And so you're shouting at each other, trying to get them pounded and moving, yep. and it's yes. 30 seconds, 45 seconds of complete mayhem, <laughs> but a real energizer and the kind yep. of thing that sets you up for a really good session. Yeah. Like I said, we played this at Essen last year. It was hilarious. I think we actually got it recorded. So if you want to go back and check out that content, it is funny as hell to see a group of like 15, 20 people playing this game. And mm. if you guys are doing it live at the show this year, yeah. definitely get across to the guys at Call Spring Games. Uh, guys, that is all we have time for. So I'm afraid we're going to have to call it there. That's okay. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very much for having us. A lot of games. Yeah. Okay. Uh, everybody, don't forget, we do have the live blog running in tandem with the live stream this weekend. And in that live blog, there are tons of prizes that you guys could win. We'll move on here and we'll see you again very soon on Tabletop.